Hello everybody and welcome to Audio Podcasting Masterclass Week 2. My name is Tom Sternad and uh, thanks for joining us again to uh, uh, experience and uh, you know go through this journey of uh, recording a, an audio podcast and uh, specifically a narrative one. So last week we talked about writing a script, getting that script done and then today we're going to look at how to record that and going through those those essentials and those basics. So um, yeah, I just want to start off by thanking all of our uh, partners in this project for making it happen. We have the Canon Council for the Arts. We have our library partners, Blue Mountains Public Library, Collingwood Public Library, Wasaga Beach Public Library. Now the exciting thing too is that the audio kits, the digital sound recorders, uh, iMac computers that we'll be getting into some of the post-production work once we finish recording this audio podcast um, in the coming weeks, all of this equipment is available through our library partner, so you can take out a digital uh, sound recorder, you can take out microphones, and then record your podcast. So it's, everything's possible. Um, do you want to remind everyone that you can, you can also get people to record uh, remotely, so if you're able to you know, take a, a session, any kind of video conferencing, and get that, uh, you know, record that uh, in as well. Uh, remotely so not everybody you don't have to even necessarily be in the same room same location but you can be coming together uh, virtually and recording your podcast that way there's a lot of creative ways to do it and but today we'll look at specifically microphones and you know something like the uh, this good old uh, condenser microphone uh, right there and um, you know how do we record uh, uh, how do we do an audio uh, podcast recording and what, what's what does it take to do that so um, yeah, let's just jump right into this and then uh, we'll, we'll uh, go from there. So we're going to look at recording voiceover from script. So we, we finish our script. So I have a script that we worked on. And uh, again, it can be any kind of document, Word document or final draft in this case uh, we're using. And, um, you know, to record the lines and the, and the voices and, and go from there. So we have something written. That was our goal for last week to write some sort of a script that you can make an audio podcast with narrative script, uh, basically fictional, uh, you know, you can work on, it could be uh, true crime or, you know, there could be factual, fictional, all sorts of blends. So I'm not going to put any kind of parameters, but the point is that you've created some sort of a script of something that you're going to record, whether it's as narration, as a documentary. Um, but the, the key is that we want to be able to have a few areas and we want to play with sound effects as we get into post-producing these as well. Right, so we've done that. We're gonna look at uh, how, you know, the, the IO devices, and that stands for input output devices. A uh, little bit on the types of microphones, and then we'll look at actually recording the audio podcast. How does it, uh, what, what does it need to, in order to record? Okay, so uh, let's look at some of the devices available. So um, in terms of you know, what, what's available and, and how this uh, works, so you know, there's, there's these kinds of input output devices. So these will be, um, you know, r relatively small, but they're usually like a Thunderbolt uh, uh, type uh, requirement. Um, but then you can put in microphones here. And that's the key. So when we've we finished preparing this script, we have it written out in terms of the different characters. In this case, I have a narrator, there's a young girl, a clerk, and so on. So we've written, figured out all the, the characters, and we need it in this kind of a format. And that lets us be ready to record the script. Right, and then, you know, we, we need to figure out how to record it, technically, right? So we're gonna look at types of microphones after the IO devices, um, recording the audio podcast. We'll actually demo it, go through it, try recording it, and, you know, show you guys what it, what it will look like uh, once it's recorded. So recording your script. So here's just some guidelines and, you know, very you know, general in a way, and not necessarily rules, but just some good guidelines, best practices, if you will. So you can record each part on its own, and that's really key. To record each part is traditionally how, how it can be done or it can be done as a group session recording. And um, as I mentioned earlier, you can also record using remote options. So maybe you'll want to you know, have an option where um, you, know, you, you can't um, specifically uh, connect with someone in person. So you need to, they're somewhere else. So you wanna patch them in if you will. Um, and that's okay. So, you know, we have a lot of great uh, remote recording options available now. Uh, you can get different apps, different services. It can be as simple as video conferencing. If you already have something that's, a, that's existing, like a Google Meets, um, anything like that. As long as you can record and then have that file, uh, we'll look at how we can bring any kind of file in into a, a program like Blackmagic DaVinci Resolve, where we can then do the sound editing using the Fairlight um, uh, area or region 
within that software. So it's really uh, a great way to work. So, okay, so the input output device, so let's move right into that. There's a variety of these. Um, as I just quickly pointed out that, you know, something portable like a, a Thunderbolt 3 recorder, digital sound recorders, uh, you know, that's the other one. So this will be kind of one of the main ones and something that you can take out from the library directly. So, you know, this, this kind of a, a, a digital sound recorder, this is a Tascam DR40. Uh, with our library partners, we offer the Zoom H4n, which is um, a, a four channel. And basically you can put in a left and a right XLR and you can also record from the top here. And that's the great thing about the portable sound recorder is that even if you don't have a microphone, you can record some really good, decent audio from the built-in microphones right there. Great for like concert, ambient recording. You can take this out in the field, record sound effects. You can record, you know, let's say you need a, a small town, uh, village, uh, cars driving by. Just take this recorder out and record a few minutes and then uh, you can add that as a sound effect. But otherwise we can put in XLR cables and that's what we'll look at today. Um, and again, equipment that you can get out th uh, from the library. So this would be a, a portable digital sound recorder. Uh, otherwise, there are these things. Uh, this is a universal uh, audio device. It's called the Aero. Um, and this allows you to patch in a, like a keyboard. You have headphones and then you can put in a couple XLR or quarter inch uh, microphones or, or cables there. And you can output to some speakers too. So that's kind of a nice thing that, um, you know, you can uh, you know, kind of work on, on recording that way. And then you get your levels right here, uh, channel one, uh, channel, channel one, channel two, the two channel this way, and then there's like a, a monitoring output. Again, a little bit more complicated, but that is technically a, you know, an, in, in out, an IO input output device. And then you have things like this, which is a, a nice little unit. Again, a, an XLR cable in, you have a, a volume control, like a gain, and you can put the 48 volt uh, phantom power, which is what a lot of the condenser microphones that we'll talk to you about shortly and uh, will require. And the great thing about this little unit, it's the, um, uh, what's the name again? It's the uh, iTrack One Pre, is you can plug this right into an iPad. So then you can use something like GarageBand and, uh, and work in that kind of manner. Um, but again, it's using, you know, more technology and uh, it is, it's a great way though. You can put in XLR cables and, and then use another um, piece of hardware like that. So these are all kind of options. We have some great videos you can check out on our YouTube channel that we've already uh, dealt with some of these topics. So please rewatch them as a great resource of, of past workshops and, and um, videos, informational videos about how a lot of this equipment can work. So really it's a great resource to check out. So, so uh, do, do check that out. Um, okay, so let's let's move on here. So in terms of the types of microphones, several types of microphones, like right now you're hearing me, I'm talking on what's called a lavalier mic or lav mic for short. These again are available through our uh, digital arts equipment through the library partners. Um, and the, the microphone kit is a, a remote, so it's a wireless lav kit, and it can be plugged in directly to the digital sound recorder, or it can be plugged into a camera. So that's, uh, you know, I should mention that too, that's another way you can do it. If you already have a camera, you can plug in a microphone to your camera, uh, a photography camera, anything that can do video, that can create like a, a motion file that you can get audio from. So even if you film video, you can just take the audio from it. And again, something like Blackmagic DaVinci Resolve, you can just take the audio and, and not worry about it. Um, then the other thing is this condenser microphone. So this is very typical, you know, we're used to seeing this kind of a, a, a microphone, I'm just going to lower it in, into shot here. This kind of a microphone on some sort of a, a shotgun mount. Um, and, uh, and this is a Shure. We have uh, some audio, great audio technica uh, mics available through um, the library partners that, that you can take out. And then we have a, what's called a pop filter in here. And this pop filter just covers the front of the microphone and it gets rid of, kind of essentially a condensation as we talk, any kind of pops. Um, and it, it just gives you a nice clean recording. So you don't have to worry about the specific pops. Now there is a front and back to this. So usually the logo, um, I'll just pull this out here a little bit. The logo here, you can see it says sure. So that would be the front. And then there's the back here. Um, and it is important because it is directional. So only from the front will it record it. It won't record the back. So kind of that off axis stuff. So you want to be right talking right in front of it, like check, check, check like that, right? And that's kind of the idea with the condenser microphone. So very typical, we've seen these 
a lot in like, you know, kind of radio station type things or films and, and things like that. So the other one is, um, this is the shotgun microphone and this is available too through our sound kit. And the, without the foam, I'm just going to show, see, it's a very long directional uh, microphone. So you talk to some to the front and this is designed to be more like, uh, to, you know, like to point at the mouth. So it's more like for film, like a, a, a boom mic, uh, if we're familiar with that term. So, you know, you're taking this kind of mic and it's a boom mic, so you can put it right above actors' um, uh, mouths and it doesn't have to be in the shot, right? But I'm just showing you for demonstration purposes. And that can be close like this and then you're just getting it towards the mouth. And this could be a microphone that you can use for your sound recording as well. So again, another option for recording our sound. Um, the main thing is to really, it's... Uh, you know, we want to go through the exercise. So you want to get good, decent recorded sound. We're not looking for the most, uh, you know, pristine, perfect recording. It's more to get through the exercise, We're looking at your levels. It might be a little bit noisy, but we want to learn from this. So don't feel uh, overwhelmed that, oh, I got to, you know, think of all these different microphones. We already have the kits ready. So you just take it out and then you can record. And, and that's why I'm recommending using the digital sound recorder um, and not necessarily using you know an extra computer or an extra iPad because then you're just adding more into the mix that uh, could could be more complicated. Um, some of the other microphones uh, that we use in the um, with the, the Blue Mountains Public Library um, so we've established a bit of a, a recording studio. Uh, there's an MXL um, and this is the there is an MXL available through the Wasaga Beach Public Library um, and that's a condenser microphone as well so there's you know, whether it's the Audio-Technica or MXL, very similar type. I just wanted to mention that there's the other brand and, uh, and that's, that's available. Um, uh, you know, you'll get, you'll find either one, but they all look very similar, you know, in terms of a, a condenser microphone. What does it look like? How does it behave? Um, you know, again, uh, logos talking to the front and not on the back. And you'll know really clearly if you're recording with, and you have your headphones that you're hearing what sounds it's called basically off access. So it sounds like it's not coming directly uh, to you. It's coming from somewhere else. So it's a bit of an off access moment. So, you know, so that's, that's what we're looking at. So, the, you know, those, these kinds of microphone options are, are fantastic and, uh, and, and work quite well. So again, so condenser microphone to summarize, a lav or a shotgun mic are really your main things. Um, if you're ever really stuck, you can technically even plug in headphones and use them as a microphone it can be reverse engineered. Um, I've done that sometimes uh, in a pinch to try to, um, you know, get something recorded just even as a rough in case uh, something was forgotten. So you can plug in a microphone, uh, a headphone thing and, uh, and into a microphone input and, and make that work as a, as a microphone. So it's a, a cool little trick. Um, and yeah, that's it. So recording the audio podcast, we're going to get right into this shortly. Now, the, the thing here is, is, uh, you know, best practices again. So recording the audio, you want to find a nice quiet area indoors and, you know, try to minimize all the sounds that are happening. So if there's things running, like uh, I'm thinking like, I don't know, uh, dishwashers or laundry machines or anything like that that's, that's running or windows are open and it's loud outside, let's say there's construction area, you might want to look at closing windows, getting into a more uh, sound proofed area. You can also use sweaters, blankets, things like this to try to reduce the amount of sound that's coming into an area. Uh, I recommend even you could go technically into like a closet and, uh, you know, record your sound in there to try to get a nice clean sound. You wouldn't want to necessarily record an audio podcast unless it was part of the story. Uh, to do that somewhere outside, ten, there's a tendency then you'd have a lot of that outdoor sound. Uh, this time of year, birds. Um, and again, there's a lot of construction starts in the spring. So, you know, you want to really think about what's, what you're hearing. If you can hear it on the headphones, then that means it's recording. General rule of thumb, and we introduced this last week, is the maximum audio input when you're recording the top like level peak should be minus 6 decibel. And then the minimum audio level uh, is about minus 20. And that's kind of your range of, of audio from uh, in talking, like vocal levels for the top to lower level. So minus 6 to minus 20. The, the other thing too is you want to look at trying to take do a few takes because it's just going to get better. You know, if you, if you start talking and you go through the, the lines and the, 
the recording and and um you know there, there tends to be it gets better with practice so you know why not run a few takes and then you can have some more variety to to choose from when you go into the editorial um to um to listen to it at that point so um yeah let's let's uh, start to look at uh, you know recording and so i have this script that we uh, you know i put together to demonstrate uh, something for an audio podcast. So we're gonna record. I'm gonna do the different uh, roles. I mean, usually you'd wanna have a few other people um, in the roles so that there's, um, you know, you're not just, uh, you know, one person doing all the roles. But just for the demonstration purposes, I'm gonna do a few of the roles uh, uh, myself. So, you know, in terms of where the microphone placement, you wanna be able to be like pretty close to it. And, and you know, kind of work in that kind of uh, uh, proximity. It can be pretty close with the condenser microphone. And then what we need to do is we're gonna plug in the XLR cable. So that goes right on the bottom here. And let's just start from scratch here. So traditionally this is, it would just be an XLR cable. I'm just gonna unplug it and then show you guys what that would look like. So so we got this, this top mic here. Let me just get this off. Oops, it's kind of stuck in here right now. Oh, I actually screwed this in. Okay, so this microphone uh, has the XLR cable on the bottom here. Um, so in terms of the, there's pins and there's a little top clip here. So you, you push that down, then you can release it. So I'm just gonna pin that back in and then I'm gonna demo here with another microphone just to show you guys what, uh, you know, what a, what a cable uh, plug-in would, uh, would look like. So I have this the back of here is a bit of a shorter cable I'm gonna use. Um, so again, the, uh, for the microphones like this, you have the, the uh, three lines like this. Now, there's basically, um, uh, it's called a balanced uh, input because this has uh, a grounding. So the ground gets rid of any kind of uh, hum and noise that might interfere with what's going on. So here we're just gonna clip it into here and you hear that little click and now we know it's, you won't be able to take this off. And I think that's really important to remember is that you can't just yank these off. You have to push down. So I'm pushing down on this lever, push down, and then I can slide it off. And it's, it's pretty snug, but that's the key is that you're gonna have to push down and then uh, release it. The other end looks, so that's, that's that cable there. Um, now the other end looks a little bit different. What does it look like? It looks like, let me just grab it from the stand here. Uh, it's just the opposite, right? So we have the uh, the cable, the, the pin st sticking out. Now this one doesn't have that, uh, the lever that you need to push because technically if that other end was going to this end, that would lock it into place. So this just goes into the back of uh, the sound recorder itself. Uh, so let's have a look here. So if this goes right here, you would then go into you just line it up so you can see, okay, there's the top and the bottom like that. And we're just gonna slide it. You can get in here a click. Now you can see this has, every one of these sound recorders has a little push pin here. So you need to push that so you can push and then release it, right? So a little bit of technical uh, overview here just to make sure that everyone's uh, uh, familiar and, and you know kind of ready to go with uh, recording. Okay, so that's uh, good for the recorder. Now I'm just gonna uh, give myself a little bit of slack here in the cable. Okay, uh, really great important piece of, uh, a piece of equipment for any kind of recording is to have some headphones. Now generally you might be, you know, the one who's just recording and uh, someone else is doing the lines. If that's the case, you're wearing headphones, you're monitoring. Uh, it, sometimes some people don't like listening to themselves uh, speak and record because it, it's a little bit weird because you're monitoring yourself. So if you're recording yourself, you might just want to record it and then you can go, you know, listen to it again later and play it back. If, if you're recording another person doing the lines, you definitely want to be listening to the headphones, making sure, you know, what does it sound like and, and, and what's there. So you know, just any kind of nice uh, pair of headphones. Um, you know, you get those on and there's a nice headphone jack uh, on the top of these recorders and you just plug them into to the top right here. 
there's like a, a input, uh, you can see a little headphone diagram there. So I'm just gonna plug that right into there and that's ready to uh, record. So I've plugged in this, I've plugged in that. Now I'm gonna just hit the power, uh, and this is, again, this, this DR40 is very similar to the Zoom H4n. Uh, this is my own recorder, but again, our library partners, we've, we use the Zoom H4ns in, the, in terms of equipment that you can take out. I'm gonna just press this uh, for a few seconds, and then it, it powers itself on, very similar to the Zoom H4n. And it's gonna ask me a question here. It says Phantom on, are you sure? And I'm going to say enter yes. So phantom power is basically a, a 40 volt uh, power that's added in through the XLR cable and it powers the microphones. And a lot of microphones need a little uh, power to actually work. And that's called phantom power. And uh, it's not like a, a horror film or something, but it's phantom power because you need some sort of power to make it work and run. So that's, that's a, a part of it to make sure that it will, it will work and run. So that's, that's called phantom power. Now to access that, uh, you just go through the, the menu and I'll just kind of show that, just the idea of where you would find something like this. So I will go to uh, record settings and, uh, oops, that's not it. Oh, this is a little bit different. Uh, hmm. Actually, we have it right here on the side. Okay, so in the Zoom H4n, it will be in the menu, but here it's actually really simple. It has just a, a click button. Uh, there's a bit of reflection here. So there's a line, mic, or mic plus phantom. So I, I forgot that it goes really easy here on the on the DR40. Within the, the Zoom H4n, you actually have to go to the menus and, and turn on phantom on or off. So the key is you're finding the setting that says phantom 48 volt phantom power on or off. If you're using a condenser microphone or a shotgun microphone, you need to turn it on. Always make sure, uh, and you know, we've made it clear in terms of uh, you know, instructions and things that the microphones that we send out in the kits are require phantom power, but some other microphones may, uh, may not. So it's always better to err on the side of not turning the phantom power on uh, if, you're, if it's not on already and seeing if the microphone will work. You'll know right away the microphone won't work and you won't get any sound out of it and that means you need phantom power. Uh, so again, all the mics that we have in our kits do require phantom power, the condenser and the shotgun mics. The lav mics are, uh, do not, but they don't, they don't plug in through the XLR cables, they would just plug in through the auxiliary or to a camera input. So there's no way to run it into something that could give you phantom power. So we made it pretty simple, um, but just to be aware of what is phantom power so you know what you're using. So it's adding power to, uh, to actually make the microphone accept the audio recording. It needs power to function. So it adds uh, that power to work. Okay, so now in terms of, uh, so we have that, uh, everything's powered on. And then what you need to do with these, you hit record once and now I can hear and, and this is, the, it says here pre, right? So what it's doing is it's, there's levels right here. Check, 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 right? So we can, we can, you know, we can see those levels. Check, 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 check one, two, check one, two, right? So you're seeing the levels go and it's what's called pre-recording and nothing's recording and you can, you can see the, the zeros are not moving at all. And then, once I set my levels, I hit record again. Now, how do we set levels? There's just level markers always on the side and the, and the zoom is very similar. So um, I would just go to uh, the uh, external input and then by pushing up, I'm going up in numbers. So it's just a little bit of reflection here, but it go, it's going from 37 all the way to, it can go to 100. And what I'm trying to find is there's a little arrow here and that's representing the minus six. And that comes back to this idea of minus six to minus 20. So you don't want to peak above minus six. And the idea there is that zero in the digital realm is totally would be distorted. It's the maximum. So we want to stay at minus six. So right now the, the levels are looking uh, pretty nice. If you, you can see that it, I'm just going up to that arrow there, right? So let's just try this again. Now I'll put this right in front here. Check, check one, two, check, check, check one, two, check, check. So you can see I'm just getting to that 
aero part and it, it's it's sounding pretty good on my headphones too right so i got my headphones i got that and again i'm not recording until i hit record again so let's just have a look at what that would look like so here we are once i'm recording i'm gonna hit right it's on standby i'm gonna hit it again to actually record check one two look at the numbers rolling four five six seven and then i hit record again and that's going to stay paused and that's the cool thing so you can pause and then you can keep recording it's going to sound like it's seamless or i hit the stop button here and now it's off and i no longer hear the pre-record i no longer hear that pre-record in terms of you know hearing it ahead of time um, it's all paused now like that right so, so that's really cool um, okay, so let's let's get back to our uh, our script here. Uh, it's got to open up the iPad here. Okay, so we have our script. Uh, I've written out my script. I'm ready to record. So let's let's look at recording this and and uh, you know give it a take and then I can play it back and you guys can hear what it what it sounds like. There's a little bit of fan noise just from our uh, live broadcast uh, system here, the uh, computers and things. So again, I would usually not have that but you know otherwise you guys wouldn't see me if I didn't uh, have the fans running for the computers here so um, that would be some uh, kind of a noise thing that would want you know we'd want to consider a little bit if you uh, are, are picking it up but it's not too much of a pickup and that's the good thing about the condenser mics is they they're pretty um, close uh, area pickup they're not really getting a lot of off access or noise they're pretty you need to be really close to them and that's what they're recording they're not recording a lot around outside um, so that's, that's the, the, the cool part of that. Okay, so uh, I'm going to, again, just do my standby here. Uh, I'm going to hit uh, record once. So I already have my levels and I'm ready to go. Um, okay, and I got my script. Okay, here we go. Let's give it a, let's give it a, a, a whirl. So again, what I'm reading now in the script is I'm just going through like narrator, young girl, clerk, just the parts. I don't have to say their names, but I'm just going to do their different roles. And I'm going to do uh, different um, vo slight voices, just so as if they were different people reading it, just for the uh, demonstration purposes. So it might be a little bit weird, but uh, we'll get through a demonstration this way. Okay, so here we go. Audio podcast demo, take one. A man plays a violin next to the ticket booth. A young girl walks up to the ticket booth. I'd like one ticket to Toronto, please. I'm sorry, little girl. Do you have a parent with you? I can't sell you a ticket to board alone. The clerk looks away. I can't wait to see the art gallery exhibit. The young girl sits on a train. She looks identical to the young girl at the ticket booth. Right, so, and then I'm going to just... Uh, pause and then I can say okay do I want to do another take so I like to just stop it and then I can do another take if I want to do another take so let's just do another take um, you know and the, the cool thing is you can try different things uh, as, as you do the different takes right so I'm just gonna again I'm recording okay and uh, let's let's do another uh, take here and I'm just gonna go from the side again so you can see the, the levels okay and here we go audio podcast demo take two a man plays a violin next to the ticket booth. A young girl walks up to the ticket booth. I'd like one ticket to Toronto, please. I'm sorry, little girl. Do you have a parent with you? I can't sell you a ticket to board alone. The clerk looks away. I can't wait to see the art gallery exhibit. The young girl sits on a train. She looks identical to the young girl at the ticket booth. So, you know, just playing... You know, whether there's different accents or, uh, you know, some sort of uh, quasi-British uh, accent uh, playing with. But I get different takes and you'll see, you get, you get into it. You'll have different ideas and the characters come to life. And again, you might not be doing the, the voice recording at all. It might be other friends and family or, or you know, people do acting out these parts. But that's the fun thing is to try different uh, ideas in recording, trying different um, uh, concepts and thinking about what uh, what the characters are doing because the the voice now has to tell us what we would normally see so we do have like some of these sound effects we have the narrator so we've built up something that um you know can be uh, visually experienced through the audio and that's kind of the idea so the the voice acting is 
even sometimes more important because we don't have any nuances in terms of eyes or emotions on the face. It all comes through the voice. So it's more and more, it's even more crucial to do multiple takes in an audio podcast than in, uh, a, you know, if you're doing it as a film or video. And so think about how important the audio is. So every single thing uh, becomes quite, quite important in terms of, um, you know, what it, what it can, uh, what it can look like and, and, and how it can work. Okay. So we recorded, I'm just going to, uh, hook this up. And my, my plan here is hopefully that I can, uh, play it back a bit and we can just hear the, uh, the audio levels of what we were able to record and just give us kind of a sense of, of, um, of what that, uh, what that was like. So I'm just gonna, I have this other camera here that I should be able to play the audio through. So I'm just gonna give this a, a bit of a whirl and we're gonna see if this will work. I'll plug in right here. Okay. Okay, let me see if this is gonna work and uh, I'll patch it right in. Ticket to Toronto, please. I'm sorry, little girl. Do the levels? Okay. okay, so here we go. We're going to listen to it. Audio podcast demo, take two. A man plays a violin next to the ticket booth. A young girl walks up to the ticket booth. I'd like one ticket to Toronto, please. I'm sorry, little girl. Do you have a parent with you? I can't sell you a ticket to board alone. The clerk looks away. I can't wait to see the art gallery exhibit. The young girl sits on a train. She looks identical to the young girl at the ticket booth. So, you know, just playing, you know, whether there's... Okay, so you can you can hear that a bit. Uh, I know it's, it, it's not coming in uh, as, as loud as I want it to hear, so I'm just going to try and... See if I can make it go this way. There we go. Okay, so let's let's uh, let's give this one more whirl here. Let's play it again. I just got to go forward here a little bit to get, get to number 25. So let's listen to the other one that we did. Do the levels? Okay, and here we go. Audio podcast demo, take two. A man plays a violin next to the ticket booth. A young girl walks up to the ticket booth. I'd like one ticket to Toronto, please. I'm sorry, little girl. Do you have a parent with you? I can't sell you a ticket to board alone. The clerk looks away. I can't wait to see the art gallery exhibit. The young girl sits on a train. She looks identical to the young girl at the ticket booth. So, you know, just playing, you know, whether there's... Yeah, so you can see how, uh, you know, it's pretty interesting. So let's just, uh, I'm just going to go back here. I want to get the clean one of the first one recorded. Uh, I got the levels up here a little bit louder. So let's just give this a listen. Okay, so here we go. Audio podcast demo, take one. A man plays a violin next to the ticket booth. A young girl walks up to the ticket booth. I'd like one ticket to Toronto, please. I'm sorry, little girl. Do you have a parent with you? I can't sell you a ticket to board alone. The clerk looks away. Do the the levels okay and here we go audio podcast demo take two a man plays a violin next to the ticket booth a young girl walks up to the ticket booth i like one ticket to toronto please i'm sorry little girl do you have a parent with you i can't sell you a ticket to board alone the clerk looks away i can't wait to see the art gallery exhibit the young girl sits on a train. She looks identical to the young girl at the ticket booth. So, perfect. Okay, so you can see, like, you know, it sounds really nice. Uh, it's pretty clean. 
Um, again, you can hear this probably a little bit more fan noise when you, uh, you know, hear me with this lav mic because this lav is picking up more. So you can see the beauty of the condenser mic. It's actually kind of a nice comparison to hear, you know, what, what we can do with the sound recorder, with the condenser mic. Um, and, and I, you know, I'm pretty happy. Like we're able to get something decent. I know it's kind of funny getting me doing all these, the character voices at the same time. Um, but, uh, you know, quite an interesting way to, to, uh, to get, um, at least demo it and try it. Like you don't need to necessarily work with, you know, 10 actors or, or three actors to do it. You can record it yourself just to get through the, the exercise of practicing this. Uh, cause I'm telling you like once you can, you know, write these, prepare them, see what works, what doesn't work and, and what the best way to approach this way of sound storytelling through sound, uh, you'll be amazed at what's, uh, what's possible and, uh, what you can achieve. So again, you know, the first one was, I would say more of a kind of standard read. Um, and then the second one, we, you know, try a little bit of a British accent, if you will, on that. And, um, uh, you know, able to, uh, to, to play a little bit with the, the characterizations of that. And it, it brings something different to the plate. So, you know, do at least uh, two, three um, recordings of whatever you've written. And again, if it's just yourself, you can always do the different voices. Um, and, and, you know, feel free to share these uh, with, with, uh, with myself. So you can email me, uh, tom at tbmcs.ca if you have a recording or if you have any technical questions about setting up the, the microphones and the, um, the digital sound recorder. So again, really, uh, you know, great system in terms of just having the, the sound recorder um, and, you know, being able to play it back after as well and, and hear that back. And uh, again, and then so once we're done, uh, the process is I would, uh, you hold this to turn it off and it will say, the zoom says goodbye. This one turns off like that. And then what I would do is just push in and unplug it. And that way it's not plugged in when you turn it back on. And uh, if uh, you know, you always want that message of like the phantom power and, and working that way. And then, um, yeah, then the microphone you just simply would, would put away uh, and take apart and, uh, and that's the same process. So the, the, the again, this shotgun microphone would not be um, any different. You know, you'd record uh, pretty directional. It can be close. And the, the closer this is, again, there won't be that much off axis sound. The, so the off axis sound is anything that you hear around it. So if this is pretty close, it'll be nice and clean. Um, and then same with the condenser microphone, keeping that, uh, again, pretty, uh, you know, close proximity. Like I can be really close. You can see it's only like, uh, a couple, uh, you know, uh, inches away from, from the actual, uh, microphone. So you're really in there. You know, that's how close you want to get to be able to record. Um, so that's it. So that's, that's the main task. So what we want, um, what I want everyone to do for next week, we're going to then, once we have everything recorded, we're going to get into the sound design and editing what we've recorded. So for next week, I want everyone to, um, record what you've written, have that ready. And then we're going to take those files, like what I just recorded today, take those files and bring them into uh, sound editing software. And we're going to look at, uh, you know, it's a few options that are available, but we'll mainly be working in the uh, Blackmagic DaVinci Resolve that uh, where we can do the sound uh, editorial and we'll look at Pro Tools as well. So a couple options, uh, both free options uh, out there. And uh, we'll look at that and how, how that can work and, and just bring in some sound effects and things. So um, yeah, that's perfect. Let me just see uh, if anybody has any quick questions or anything, you can let me know. And, and like I said, you can email me tom at tbmcs.ca and be happy to uh, you know listen to what you've been up to, what you recorded um, and, and uh, yeah, that'll, that'll be the, the task. So make sure for next week, record. You can rewatch week one if you have any uh, you know, issues with looking at uh, writing your script, getting that script going. So write your script, record it, and then next week we're going to look at now that we've recorded, how do we bring that in and how do we start to post-produce the audio podcast and add sound effects and uh, all the way through to the final mix in our week four. So uh, thanks again for joining me. Uh, it was a real pleasure to go over this and uh, you know, do, do some recording, uh, with you guys and we will see you again next week. And like I said, you can email me any questions, or if you want to, uh, to, uh, share what you've recorded, feel free to do so. So 
uh, until next week. Thanks again for joining us and have a great rest of the day. Take care.